Maybe that's where it's going to blame you. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You know what I did? I walked away with other bulls, and I have this here. That'll that, that really work. Uh, I, I don't, uh, the one is not here this morning. It's just not feeling well. So I don't have my, my boss with me. He can straighten no over. Let's go to the home. <laughs> well, welcome you this morning. Uh, this is the first Sunday in March, so we need to recognize our birthdays and our anniversaries. So, who has a birthday in March, Sarah? I don't know. Sarah's smiling back there. What's that? Diane. Diane, Diane just had one, didn't she? Miss Diane from Georgia has a has a had a birthday. Sarah has a birthday. What day is your birthday? 23rd. The 23rd. Well, here's a long ways away. <laughs> Anybody else got a birthday in March? All right. Well, let's make happy birthday to her. Well, yeah. We'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. Does anybody have an anniversary in March? No. Okay, there you go. Good job. <laughs> Anybody else in America? Well, it's congratulations to one and condolences to the other. All right, let's sing happy anniversary.
at the moment, but if I don't have it, I don't remember it. Um, I had a request come in, uh, right for Jason Beasley, he had fallen and broken his hip. He's also now back in the hospital with, uh, he'd gone home, and the nurse came by and found him and he had some pneumonia. So he's back in the hospital with pneumonia now. Uh, I need to remember him. Um, I need to remember Will Smith. He is doing much better. Um, it's going to take a little bit for Shelter to get back to where it needs to be. Uh, but the plan right now is for him to come home on Monday. And uh, we'll thank God for that. Uh, to get him back to where he needs to be. Um, I actually, this is. You don't have to, I guess, you have to forgive me or try to teach me better. I, I'm not. I don't like giving my own request because who am I? Uh, but if y'all pray with me for Luana as well, I'm uh, trying to get her medicine straight and everything up. But she said this morning she didn't sleep much last night. She's not feeling well right now. And uh, just want her to get better. <laughs> she needs to just touch the Lord right now just to help her to, to feel better and be able to keep moving and, and grooving and doing the things she needs to do. Uh, you do remember those that are in the in the Ukraine that that whole area. That you need to remember both sides. Um, it was a reminder a few years ago to me in my life that this I, I tend to I tend to choose a side or I tend to pray for one and not the other. But everybody in that needs to be prayed for. Uh, everybody in that needs to touch God, whether it's for for to calm down and, and to and to see. The error of ways or just for God's protection on them. Uh, we need to pray for everybody in that situation. What else this morning do we need to mention? Do we need to lift up or do we need to remind of? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, I need prayers um, uh, on uh, Thursday. I finally had enough and I resigned from the job. So uh, uh, I'm at a point where I'm not really sure what I'm going to do from here, but. Uh, Just pray for guidance and wisdom, and that's the path comes on. Absolutely. I'm praying for the nursing home that my wife is in. I call her the nursing home. I don't know what it is. Morals. Mm -hmm. It's not morals anymore. It's part of her table, a Wilson, or whatever. But anyway, you know, she's been there about a week, and she's had one treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're pretty much uh, looking for somewhere else to take her. My daughter thinks she's going to take her to me, where she can be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, let's hope that somehow we told I told the man that by Thursday we were going to change. Let's hope that something changed between that and Thursday. Absolutely. Absolutely. She gave me a great piece of advice very recently. Miss Lynn did. She said, You don't pray for patience. So her mom would tell her, You pray for wisdom yeah. to deal with whatever situation that you're in. And I said, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Anyone else? Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Vicki starts her new throat treatment for the cancer Tuesday, and it's two hours every day for the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're on hearts more to more lift up. Let's go to the Lord this morning. <coughs> Lord, we come to you, and we do come to you with praise on our lips. Lord, we thank you so much for the blessings that you've given us in our lives. And just to look around and see your hand moving, we thank you for answers to prayer. Lord, it just seems like this life never gives us a break. Or we always have more burdens to share. Lord, walking through this world, we do. We gather those burdens, those that we love. We need a touch from you, those ourselves. We need a touch from you as well, Lord. Lord, we pray for each and every one of them. We pray for Miss Lynn and, and, and we pray for Jason Beasley. We pray for, we thank you for Michael Fulton, the good report we have on that. We pray for Marcia. Lord, in each situation, you know exactly what, what, what they need. For Vicky, for strength to, to endure, and Lord, for a touch of healing to make this as as, as quick and easy as possible, Lord, that everything is taken care of. Lord, for wisdom as life comes at us, 
and we need to make decisions and we need to know the path that we need to walk on Lord we're vision to see what you have in front of us to keep our hand in yours and walk with you Lord you know what we need in every situation so Lord this morning we come and we bring our burdens to you and place them at your feet and we ask and we pray in faith and with confidence in you that where healing is needed and healing is not where wisdom is needed that it will be granted your word says right the wisdom and it will be granted Lord, we pray for, for things to, to move, to change, the things that need to change. Lord, we pray for peace and comfort where there is strife. Lord, we pray for protection for all people in a war torn world, Lord. Lord, we pray for your hand to move in a mighty way. Lord, we pray for you to move in this world in such a way that people cannot deny that it is you, they cannot deny your existence, they cannot deny that you are there. Lord, I pray for an awakening in the world, for a revival in this world, for people to come back to you and to see you and to worship you and follow after you. Lord, what a wonderful place to live in a world that is ruled by you. Lord, we thank you right now for all that you're going to do. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, for the answers to prayer that we can see. But for those things that haven't come yet and there's ways that you're moving right now that we can't see, Lord, we thank you for them. In faith, we know that you are moving, we know that your hand is working, and Lord, we thank you for it, we give your name all praise and the glory and honor forever and ever. We pray all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You turn with me to Luke, Luke chapter 13. I know that phrases change, words talk. I, I, um, I keep up with the, I don't keep up, I'm always constantly behind. <laughs> I've gotten to the point, like, maybe you make fun of my dad because he didn't know what the, local, what, the, what the newest slang was or what the, the newest words were, you know, and all this stuff. And I'd make fun of if we knew something wrong or, or I find out now probably most of it was deliberate because I do this with my, my daughter especially. I will, I'll use words wrong or whatever it is she's in a conversation with her. But I'm so far behind, she'll say something, I'll go, what's that mean? So I know things change over time. So I'm going to ask this, and, and some of you may know exactly what I'm talking about, I would think most do, but have you ever had to have a come to Jesus meeting with somebody? You don't know what a come to Jesus meeting is? It's either you, 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 you being brought and, and you may go meet him soon. <laughs> that's, that's how I interpret it. It's never a good thing. If there had to be a come to Jesus meeting, it was never a good thing. Uh, if I was on the receiving end of it, and sometimes with, with children, I have to, have to do that. So we, sometimes we, we, we put a past connotation on that, that phrase. <coughs> but coming to Jesus is never a bad thing. Coming to Jesus is, is, never, is never bad for us. The closest thing in the Bible that I can think of is actually in Acts chapter, I think it's Acts chapter 9, where Paul is, uh, Paul is going to Damascus with letters to be able to, to basically rip people from their homes and take them back to Jerusalem for justice, for following after the way. And Jesus appears to him in bright light on the way to Damascus and knocks it. It says he fell off his horse. He knocked him off his horse. And he has, they come to Jesus speaking. Jesus looks and says, why are you persecuting me? And Paul has an answer for those things. And Paul has a very, a great change of heart. And I say that this morning because I want to talk to you a little bit about, I think, something that we've lost in the, in the modern church, and that's our altars. I was so glad the first time I walked into this church to see that we had the altar rails here. I think the altar is very important. And I understand that that over time, like right now I have a my back's been down for a couple of weeks. I'm doing fine. I can walk around, I can do most things that I want to do. So it's it's not any any great big deal. But I have a hard time kneeling right now. And a lot of people tell you whether well, it's largely symbolic or they're just you know, any all kinds of reasons that I have I have met um, several pastors in modern times that just well we we took the altars out of our church. We took the altar rails down, or we, we took them out of our church. And, and it breaks my heart. And I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about why that is, because I 
The altars are so much more than, than, than what we oftentimes think that they are, or what we oftentimes use for them. When I was growing up, you know, going off, maybe you were getting saved. Or something really bad was going on in your life. There was a bad connotation to going to the altar. You know, one of the, either when you were a sinner and you had to come to God, and that was in my mind, a much younger mind than I have, and that's a great thing, that's a wonderful thing. Or you had something really bad going on in your life, and you just had to, that's where you had to go. But the altar is so much more than that. I'm going to read with you, though, let's, let's go ahead and read the scripture this morning. Luke chapter 13 and beginning in verse 10. It says this, On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues. He was at church. And a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. And then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the, said to the people, There are six days, six days for work, so come and be healed on those days. And I don't say. The Lord answered them, You hypocrites. Does each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the saw and lead it out to give it water? And then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his, his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. This lady came and she saw Jesus. And there was a couple of things here that kept her from walking forward. A lot of times, if you had to go back into the cultural ideals of the day for that time, number one, if she was sick or bound like this, if it was known, it was always thought there was some type of sin in her life. That there was something wrong with her, even though she was a, she could have been as devout and, and straight and narrow and, and, and righteous as, as a person ever was. But it thought was it. And then beyond that, for her to enter into where Jesus was, the women weren't allowed into that area. But Jesus calls her forth. He calls her forward. He says, come to me. Woman, you are loose. Woman, thou art loose is what it says in some, in some versions. She had to come to Jesus. She had to come to the altar. She had to come to the front. And many times I, I think of that, that's almost my vision of, of what the altar call within the church is. I'm going to put this very plainly. Jesus is here this morning. We say that maybe symbolically, or we say that without thought, but sometimes there are people in the church this morning that, that are looking and they're there because this is church, all right. They have no idea of the power of where they are. They have no idea of the power of, of, of God's people gathering together to worship Him. They have no idea of the presence of God that is in that place. My vision of an altar call is Jesus is standing at the front and He's saying to everybody there, come to me. Come to me. What keeps us from doing that? At various times, it has been those Pharisees that are sitting there, that are looking, that are judging, that are saying, hmm, wonder what's going on there. The gossip mill starts running. Oh, yeah, I saw them there talking to so-and-so over here. I bet that's what they're going up there for. Mm -hmm. There's another story, just a couple of chapters, a uh, parable that Jesus tells a couple of chapters from where we are. I think it's Luke chapter 19, but don't quote me on that. Uh, it's, it's not far from here. But Jesus talks about the publican, the tax collector, and the Pharisee, and both are praying. And one is, one is standing out on the corner, making sure everybody sees him. That's the Pharisee. And he's like, Oh, Lord, thank you for letting me be so great. Letting me be such a wonderful person, not like this old sinner over here that's going over there to the altar. You know him. He's not. We don't want that. We don't want that judgment, so it keeps us from going. We, we are afraid. This woman was not afraid. She came to Jesus. He called, he begged, and she came. These altars are for more than just getting saved. They're for more than just praying for healing. We use them for that. Um, all the things you think of traditionally are something being really wrong. If you go back to the Old Testament, in Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 6, there's a couple of different places, a couple of different reasons it gives for the altar then. 
We say, well, the altar now is very much different than the altar then. Yes, we're not bringing pigs and chickens. We're not bringing pigs. We're not bringing chickens and, and doves and rams and goats and bulls and such to be sacrificed on an altar anymore. Absolutely not. But the reason for that altar was not to bring an animal to be sacrificed. That was part of the why they came. That was part of the ritual of what they came and what they were required to do. But the reasoning for it is so much different. There's all these different offerings. There's the guilt offering. As you go through here, there's the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin, sin offering. There's a fellowship offering. There are a lot of different reasons that people went to the altar. Just a burnt, a burnt offering was an atonement for sin. It was a, I want to be closer to you, Lord. So whatever there is in my life, this is a person who is walking. This is a, to put it in modern terms, this is a Christian who is going to church, who is walking, doing the thing. And he says, hey, there may be something that's going on, Lord, I want to be closer to you. Let me just present this burnt offering to atone for that sin that's in my life. Let me just go to the altar and make it, and, 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 and fellowship with you, God, and get close to you, God, and take, get some, take, take care of some things. And there was that just that grain offering. That's just for Thanksgiving. His purpose was just to say, Lord, you have blessed me greatly, and I want to thank you. And I want to go to this altar, and I want to thank you. When's the last time that any of us went to an altar just to say, God, thank you so much? I don't think one time in my life I've done that. I missed something. But they came for that. And the sin offering was something that's obvious. It is for forgiveness of sins. It is for that forgiveness of sins. It is that that. That coming to Jesus, that coming to God and saying, I am a sinner, Lord, please forgive me. I will follow after you. And there was that fellowship offering. That's actually in Leviticus chapter 7. A fellowship offering. I love that. And that's just, Lord, I spent some time with you. There's so many reasons for the altar. And the reasons that they're altered for now is the same reasons for our altar now. Well, they brought the sacrifice. What does that mean? What do we sacrifice? Well, I'm speaking for me personally. I'm not speaking for anybody else. But for me, one of the sacrifices I bring is my pride because it is my pride that keeps me from going to the altar. I have to sacrifice a bit of myself because that's what keeps me from going to the altar. I'm not sacrificing a goat or a sheep or an ox or a bull or whatever those things were. And the psalmist later on, I think it's Psalm chapter 50, again, I didn't, well, all these things are coming to my mind as I'm speaking. It wasn't one of the verses that I had written down. Because it's not, you know, it's not the bulls that you require. It's not what you're wanting these burnt offerings. That's not what you're wanting. What you want is my heart. What God wants is our heart. The purpose behind all of those offerings and all of those sacrifices and all those things in the Old Testament that, that, that they just didn't seem to grasp all the time was God saying, I want to be closer to you. Please come to me. God absolutely will come to us. He absolutely will. We sang songs. Since Jesus came into my heart, we asked him if he comes. And I'll tell you that an altar can be anywhere. An altar can be in your car on the dark road in the middle of the night when you pull over, pull over the side of the road first. <laughs> and then you've got to say a prayer. I know I had several people that said, God has really got a hold of me one night. And I had to pull over the side of the road and I came to Jesus right there in my car. I think that's beautiful. And that's an altar right there. I've known people that an altar was a stump, a tree stump in the middle of the field. And they just stood there and looked at the sky, and that's, that was their altar. That's where they went. And all, God can come, and God will come to you there, anywhere. God says that. He, you call him, he's going to come. But there is something to our attitude within it, and us coming to him. And I put it on this way. God comes when his children need him. God's always there. I heard of that. Preacher, one time he said, Listen, I understand um, that some of you are comfortable, some of you are not. He said, I just want you to know you can sit right where you are and God will come to you. And I thought, Absolutely. But I am in this place. I am in this spot. Why would I make God come to me? Why can I not get up and go to Him? The symbolism of these offers is not for God, it's for us. God will hear you exactly where you are in that pew, and he will hear you up here. It does not matter. He's going to hear you. But there's something for us as human beings to say, God, I am coming to you. I am going to you. 
I need to remember who I am. I need to remember that He's the Creator and I'm the creation. He is the Potter and I am the clay. And I am approaching His throne. It says we approach His throne with boldness, with confidence, with faith. But how am I approaching His throne if I'm not moving? We have lost something in, in, in losing the altars within our churches and losing the idea. We need to have the attitude, and I believe it's very important to have the attitude that I want to go to God and don't make Him just come to me. This woman that we read about this morning in the synagogue, Jesus calls her forward. That took courage for her to do what she did. And a great amount of courage. But she came forward and she was loosed from the back of what bound her. I think about the man, I, I so much often think about the man in the pool in John chapter 5. He's been there 38 years. And Jesus walks up to him and says, well, do you want to be well? And he says, yeah. He says, well, then get up. He didn't say he reached down and grabbed him and pulled him up. He said, get up. The man had to move. He had to get up. He had to go do something. In Mark chapter 5, I didn't think about this last night. I love this, this passage. And I say that, you know, it's kind of like I, in the hymns, I say I, I love every hymn in there. And I do love a lot of music of our church. And I, there's so many parts of the Bible that speak to me so much. Mark chapter 5, it says this beginning in verse 1. It says, They, it was the disciples of Jesus, went across the lake to the region of the, Get, the Gadarenes, the Gerasenes, whatever you or whichever version you have, or whichever place you are in the Gospels, it says different things there, but scatterings. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. The man lived in the tombs, and no one could find him anymore, not even with the chain, for he often be chained hand and foot. But he tore the chain apart, broke the iron with his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and the hills, his crowd cut itself with stone. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of them. He shouted at the top of the voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? And in God's name, don't torture me for Jesus. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. And then he goes on. He asked him, Spirit, what's his name? My name is Legion, for we are many. And he asked him to send him into the pigs. But the most important part of that is when the man saw Jesus from a long way off, he ran to him. So there's so many times the prodigal son in a far land and he's, he's as far down as he can get. He says, I'll go back to my father's house. And he walks and he goes back to where his father is. Now his father sees him from a long way off because he's looking for him. And he goes and meets him. And this Jesus, that man runs toward Jesus and Jesus is walking towards him. I tell you, as we get up and we move and we come to Jesus, as we move to Jesus, He's moving towards us. He is standing right there, and He's going to meet us on the way. If you want to be well, if you want to be unbound from whatever it is that binds you, if you if you don't think you can thank God enough, put forth the extra effort. There's so many things to come to Jesus for. Because ultimately we're seeking after, that's in Galatians, we're seeking after God's approval, not man's. If what's keeping us there is, is that what do people think? And I, you know, I, I'm talking to myself more than anybody else at that time. Paul says this in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10 Am I now trying to win human approval or God's approval? Or am I trying to prove people? If I was still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Or, we're pleasing God. So I say to you this morning, if I think a speaker within our church one time was asked, you know, how many uh, how many points does the perfect sermon has, have? And he said, well, at least one. I've only got one point this morning. Help Jesus. However that looks to you, however that is to you, however that that comes when you come to Jesus. If it's coming to this altar, that's great. I encourage us, encourage you to use the altars. If the altars are not an option physically for us anymore, there's that front pew, and that front pew works just as well. If it's just, I need to stand up where I am, 
however it goes. Come to Jesus. Don't make him come to you. He is always there. He is always waiting. But come to Jesus. Come to Jesus with your praise. Come to Jesus with your thanks. Come to Jesus with your just wanting to fellowship with him. Come to Jesus with your sin. Come to Jesus with a need for forgiveness, to be unbound, to be well, whatever it is. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus this morning. Keep looking, and I talked about this some last week, how to cure the ills of this world. And Jesus is the only thing that's going to cure the ills of this world. God is the only thing that's going to cure the ills of this world. How much better, how much more peaceful, and how much easier this life would be if we just come to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you and I love you for your great love for us. It's overwhelming how much you love us, how much you care for us. And Lord, I thank you that you are always there. And that when you hear your children cry out, that you, you run. Lord, I think Peter, walking on the water, loses the sight of you and begins to sink. He hadn't got to you yet, Lord. Yet you were right there with him. He said suddenly you were there beside him. Just to imagine you running on the water to get to him to help him before he sinks. And Lord, I know you're there for us. But Lord, I, I pray for a desire in your people's heart to come to you. To move towards you, to constantly be walking on the path that you have for us so that we can be closer to you, to constantly walk towards you, to, help, to, to come to you, to be closer to you, to walk with you, to learn from you. To fellowship with you, to be close to you. Lord, I just thank you so much for that opportunity. Lord, be with us this morning. Speak to us, speak into our hearts. And Lord, we just thank you. We thank you for everything. And I pray always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, no, four or five.
and still breathing. But no reflection on that. I can't live anymore. I can go down, but I can't get up. But uh, I am coming to the Lord this morning, begging for just a little attention to my wife. She's a wonderful woman. She's a godly woman. We've been there together 57 years. And uh, I want to continue. And uh, it's not my will, but I will, Lord. And I'm asking now that somehow that we get some attention in the home that she's in, get some therapy. And she's she's seen the therapist one time in the week now that we've been there. And uh, I'm just praying that we will find another room if, if, if we don't get some better attention. She's, she's so determined. She, she's doing things for herself. She's, as much as she can, she's squeezing empty paper and ridiculous and things that she needs equipment to use. So uh, I'm asking that either the Lord would send somebody that can tend to her or we'll find somebody that we can carry to. My daughter's come and she's working on a place in Greenville. But I praise the Lord for her and for what she's meant to me. And uh, I'd love to keep her a little more of her. <laughs> and we pray that you miss us. Let's put the prayer up for Miss Lynn, especially as well. Pray with me this morning and we'll get you next. Lord, once again, I come to you and I thank you for the, the time to be in this place, Lord. And Lord, right now, most especially, I lift up Miss Lynn. I pray for a touch of healing upon her, Lord. I pray for the wisdom to see the path that you have and the best decisions to make as they go forward, Lord. I pray for attention and pray for somebody to come and, and to, to do the things that she needs, Lord, to, to get stronger, to be able to just make everything work the way it's supposed to. And Lord, to be able to come home. Lord, I pray for strength there. Lord, we just lift her up together this morning, Lord. Lord, as we leave outside of this place today, I just ask that you, you constantly show us where you are, that we are constantly walking in the path that you have, and we are constantly coming to you, following after your will and your way, Lord. I pray that we live our lives in such a way that people see whose team we're on. They see you in our lives, Lord. I pray for curiosity to rise, for people to ask us, and I pray for us to be prepared to give the answer for why we have hope in this world. And Lord, I thank you. Give us the words to say, the actions to do. Just lead us in your will and your way as we go outside of this place that we can win this world for you. And Lord, we thank you for it. Proud things in the name of Jesus.